Cheers, guys. Man, it is great to be back. Epics 911. Welcome to VR News for Monday, December 26th, 2016. Or for some countries of the former British Empire, Boxing Day. And Boxing Day, especially here in Canada on the West Coast, is a huge retailer day. Basically, it's our version of Black Friday, the American Black Friday, where retail stores can, you know, basically make it or break it on this day for the year's sales. It's huge. All right, let's talk about a PlayStation VR game called How We Soar. And I use the term game loosely, maybe better said experience, kind of like that eagle soaring one on the Oculus Rift, except for the PlayStation. Now, you ride a phoenix. Yeah, one of the fiery phoenix of mythos where you're rising from the ashes, all of that. What's different, though, is the world that you're flying in is like a paper-crafted world. Kind of think origami style, but not necessarily Japanese uh, origami style in aesthetics. Just the fact that it's paper-based. And if you're thinking Fiery Phoenix, paper, bad combo, kind of. But what happens instead of literally lighting stuff on fire, as you swoop over terrain, you colorize it, basically. You pull a Ted Turner, you take it from black and white and colorize it. And I really like the art style. It looks fantastic. Probably something I will pick up, but we'll wait until it's on sale. But it's called How We Soar. It's from a UK studio called Penny Black Studios. The only real negative, other than the, the common one, which is length, is the fact that the controls are a little bit sluggish. But other than that, mostly just positive things that I've seen. Next title called Stifled. Talked about this a few months ago. What was unique about this game is that you play the game with no world, meaning you don't see the world. To reveal the world, where you are, how to actually move around, you've got to make noises, specifically speak into a microphone. So it uses your microphone as an input device. The more noise you make, the more of the scene gets rendered. The problem with that, though, is as you are making noise, the monsters in the world, which are attracted by, you guessed it, noise, home in on you. So there's this constant balancing act of making enough noise to render the terrain, but not too much to get eaten in the process. So sounds pretty cool. The point of the article is it's been delayed. So it was originally going to be released December 13th. They've now extended that into early 2017. And then uh, on the gaming front as well, Sorrento VR, that's S-A-I-R-E-N-T-O VR, is an early access game available on Steam right now from developer Mixed Realms PTE. Currently a Vive only game, but they're hoping to extend it to Rift down the road. Aesthetically, it kind of, according to the author, has that ROM extraction slash raw data vibe. But if anybody's seen my quick looks on either of those two games, I think they're nothing alike. I mean, there's some superficial similarities. Absolutely genre, you could argue. But in terms of play style, they're completely different. And I'm thinking that's with this as well. But if you have to draw a comparison... Apparently, that's the comparison, that it's more in line with those two games. But, um, yeah, the combat, you've got your, you know, stereotypical samurai style, ninja style, but very cool uh, looking game engine. It's a game I'm going to do a quick look on probably sometime within the next day or two is the goal. All right, news-wise, let's talk about Senso, which is a VR input glove, and its claim to fame is per-finger haptics. Every finger in the glove is going to be able to do something. And I know we've talked probably literally about half a dozen of these haptic feedback gloves, and we have yet to see any come to market. Hopefully, this device 
will come to market and it's one in a series of devices that kind of gets the ball rolling because we've been promised a lot but we haven't had much of anything actually be delivered on the haptic glove front of things. Now, the claim of this device is not just the per finger haptic feedback, it's also apparently able to sense temperatures and relay those temperatures to you. So rather sense in-game temperatures, if something is icy, fiery, etc. They don't say how they do that, just that it's available. Now, the issue historically with these devices has been tracking because there is a lack of fixed reference points. And what makes the touch and the Vive controller by extension so popular is they tie right into that self same tracking system. Not so with a lot of these other solutions. They don't have that fixed point to rely on and it's created issues like drift, uh, syncing issues. The developer here claims to have been able to work around that, saying combined with our custom software, which provides us with the opportunity to achieve almost zero drift in absolute positioning. And that's huge. However, kind of contradictory is, you know, what comes next, which are some of the specs. They say the glove is able to transmit up to 150 measurements per minute to the host device, and that's about 2.5 per second, which isn't a hell of a lot. Certainly, if you're thinking per finger, you're going to max that out really quick. So either it goes about it very slowly, or it's just not going to be able to deal with it. But until we see it and can test it, it's all speculation. Price-wise, and they have yet to finalize a commercial unit here. They're still working with prototypes. Price-wise, they're hoping to hit the 300 US dollar mark. So pretty steep. Remains to be seen how effective it is in real time. Next news story, VR Flight meets pocket-sized technology. Now, the company Aerix, A-E-R-I-X, is known for micro drones. The creation and software that micro drones use is something they have become very proficient at. Now, their latest device is called the Vidius HD, and it's kind of an interesting mix of technology. They've tried very hard to include a lot of behind the scenes tech to make the device easier to control, because that's been one of the big issues with a lot of these smaller drones control architecture, control schemes, have been pretty much, to sum it up, abysmal. And that's where these guys step in and say, no, we're going to change that. This will be more responsive. But like I just finished saying in the last story, until we see it and can assess it through some trial testing or third party testing, it's all just speculation. But what we do know, 720p, two AAA batteries, and this is a feature I really like, a built-in six-minute duration rechargeable battery. And what I like about that is it's very much like a server-grade UPS. What I mean by that is if you have a power failure in a server environment, you're not looking for a UPS that's going to let you run the whole rest of the day. That's great, and those do exist. No, what you're looking for is enough juice enough charge time to gracefully shut down your servers because SQL servers, Exchange servers, they're not real happy when you just shut things down and kind of do it not properly out of sequence. So very much like that, you run out of batteries, you're gonna get, you're gonna have six minutes to basically get your drone from the sky to the ground, which is pretty cool. Back also, this week is HTC Vive's $100 off of an HTC Vive bundle. And that basically is going to make it the $699 again, plus they're throwing in free shipping. The deal is available through HTC's official site or some of Vive's third-party resellers. And you still get the same three free titles thrown in as well. 
Next and last news piece, Kronos gains a very important ally in their quest to develop a standard VR API, basically an API that everybody uses, which would be a huge benefit to devs in particular because it's going to allow them to realize profit or at the very least break even points a hell of a lot quicker than they may without this simply because the development costs to truly go cross-platform. And you guys know my thoughts. If you've seen my videos, I don't consider Rift, Vive, cross-platform. It's the same damn platform. But what I will agree is cross-platform is going from either of those to the Sony PlayStation VR. That's where Kronos comes in. And this signing and the company's Epic Games and the engine is the Unreal Engine, which is huge. It's going to basically allow those devs with no significant added cost to get their game out to that many more HMDs because that's what it's all about for them. You know, if they need, we'll just pull a number out of the air, if they need a thousand units sold to break even and their high-end potential for the Rift and Vive combined is 800, they've now got a chance with no extra development cost, just licensing, to have that realized on Sony's platform. So very, very cool. That's Kronos, K-H-R-O-N-O-S. Their CEO, Trevitt, he says basically that having the standard API development is going to extend the market reach for developers because they can easily port to different VR platforms. Basically, exactly what I said. And he also believes that having the creators of the Unreal Engine, Epic, uh, behind them is going to enable wider adoption of the standard period, and I would completely agree with that. All right, guys, like I said, it is fantastic to be back. Uh, look for some quick look videos coming soon. Had a few out, even though there was no news the last couple of days. That's it for the news. As always, cheers, guys, and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.